Let's go to the Dude Maker Hotline and talk to Magdalene Rose, our campaign affairs correspondent here. Uh, Magdalene, uh, President Trump did what you uh, demanded that he do the other day and got with Sarah Huckabee Sanders and did an actual town hall meeting in a very small and uh, cozy uh, venue and answered people's questions for almost an hour and a half. Um, and I thought the answers were pretty good. So apparently he has people that are listening to this show. I think he definitely does. And I think he's trying to figure out what he can do amongst his own supporters to be successful in reaching them. He also went on Gutfeld, I think, last night. And what was interesting is that his appearances more and more, they seem informal. On Gutfeld last night, he was telling a story about how Tim Waltz had called him up during the height of the riots because he was afraid there were MAGA people around his house and he wanted Trump to put out a statement saying that he was his friend so that no one would get him. And I think Trump is really trying to not be the media's tool right now. I didn't... So he told... He said on Gutfeld that Waltz called yeah. him? He said during the height of those riots, Waltz called him and said, "I'm, you know, there are like American flags around my house. Will you put out a statement that I'm your friend? So that people don't attack me. <laughs> did he? I, I don't know. I think he did. I think he said he. if you go back and look at tweets, you'll see something like that. I, I can't. Um, <laughs> wait a minute. You know what? Uh, uh, Tim Waltz. Now, wait a minute now, Madeline, because Tim Waltz owns a gun. And he believes in an opportunity economy. So I don't know why anyone would be gathered around his house. He's a gun owner, and he believes in an opportunity economy. That seems pretty right down the middle ballpark, red, white, and blue American to me. Well, it does. And you know what's interesting is that during those riots in Minnesota, he'd been so on the side of leftists that MAGA people had had it. But MAGA people were not going to burn down his house. Like, Tim Waltz is a paranoid wackadoodle. He thinks that people are going to come and get him. He thinks he's constantly under siege. And Trump said on guys, so he's like, I'd never met him, but I thought, yeah, I guess maybe I'll help. And he said, Tim Waltz called him in a panic, like whispering in the phone, will you help me, please, sir? <laughs> so why, why is Trump not running more with that kind of thing? If that's what Kamala Harris's VP did, first of all, if that came up in the vetting process, I would have scrapped him as a VP choice. Because what Trump could do with just that story, it, it's just huge. Well, as you think about that story, uh, so uh, you're the governor of your state. Where's your people? Where are your people? Why do you want? <laughs> There's no. Well, I I can't wait to hear. I can't wait to hear. Super. Uh, I am for an opportunity economy, and I'm a gun owner, Waltz. Oh, and by the way, if I disagree with you, shut up. Yeah, you should be silenced. If you if your speech in our democracy is what is, is a misstatement, yeah, you don't have the right to say it. Yeah, you don't have the right to say it. Um, uh, the 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 other thing that happened to the Harris campaign yesterday, and again. People are just driving nails into this woman's coffin. Sean, uh, Sean O'Malley, the, is it O'Malley, Maggie? What's his, uh, we had the soundbite here. Sean uh, O'Brien, I had it right the first time. Goes on Neil Cavuto on other shows yesterday because he does the media tour. And Cavuto says, if you're not going to make an endorsement, why'd you release the poll? <laughs> why'd you put the poll out? Well, I think that the answer to that question is is obvious, and you shouldn't think too hard about it. They put the poll out so that Donald Trump would read it and go like, I know the Teamsters are good people and that they're behind me. Even if they don't make an endorsement, that's fine. They put the poll out thinking that he's going to be elected president and we don't want to make an enemy out of him. And I think that that's kind of the vibe here is that a lot of companies – a lot of people, like, for example, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. Yep. People who previously would have stayed out of it are sort of stepping in and, and just being neutral, except for Mark Cuban, who seems to have gone crazy and wants to be, like, the default advisor to the Kamala Harris campaign. I don't know if you saw that article about how every week he advises Kamala Harris on how to raise taxes in her policy platform. He has sort of become somebody who desperately wants to be Donald Trump but won't, and now he's saying he wants to purchase Twitter. So really, aside from him, all the business people are going for Trump. 
Well, there was a story uh, yesterday. Uh, one of the guys that runs, uh, I'm trying to remember his name now, uh, runs one of those mutual funds or, or whatever the case was, said uh, he, he came out with a statement and he goes, this is the first time I'm ever getting involved in a presidential race. And I'm going to tell you right now that if that if Harris is elected as president, I am going to cash all of my stock in, all of it. Now, well, you know, now you know why he said this. He, there's an obvious reason. It's smart why he said that, because if Harris were to be elected president, that would kind of imply then there may be a blue wave of some sort, and that would drag Pelosi or Hakeem Jeffries uh, to the speaker's desk, and they are going to pass a 45% tax on capital gains. They're going to pass a 45 or 50% ta tax on unrealized gains. Uh, so before they can go into effect, everyone is going to sell their assets. It's going to be the biggest sell-off ever, and then mm -hmm. after the sell-off, uh, that will be a, an economy crusher. So that's business people coming out going like, "Don't do it, don't do it." But here, here you want. Here's another black eye for the Harris campaign. Did you see the interview with the NABJ? Yes, I did, and did, I think that did you see it the a, end? It was a did huge you, mistake. Did you watch it all the way to the end when she walked off the stage? I did. Did you? Okay, so Maggie, female, Magdalene, female. Uh, uh, I get a different. I'm a guy, so when I look at it, I see something different. Uh, tell me what you saw when that female uh, uh, journalist looked at the males. What, what, what was that look? I think it was sort of a look of discontent. I don't see it as like a positive thing at all. Okay, so Maggie said, and my read on it was like, okay, what the F just happened? Or what the F yeah. was that? Yes. That, that, yes. That, that, now, these are friendlies. These are, fr and, and by the way, when she went to shake their hands, this was the coldest handshake. This is just like, yeah. oh, God, you guys suck so bad. You should have made me look good. Instead, you asked me a real question in there, you idiots. She, I mean, she basically thumped and stormed off that stage. She did. And I think the reason for that is because she's so used to being protected. You can't only go on RuPaul's Drag Race as a presidential candidate. <laughs> Those can't be the only kinds of interviews you do. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and you mentioned Bill Clinton. Yes, he went on talk shows, but he also was interviewed by everyone in politics who had a certain level of platform and wanted to speak to him. Kamala Harris has grown accustomed to a certain standard of interview, and it's like the Vogue questions interview on YouTube. There's no depth to it. So when she's asked, even by a friendly, a question with any level of depth, she just breaks down. What is it in her campaign that they don't prep her for anything? How are they dropping the ball that much unless she just can't be prepped? Oh, you want to hear? Maybe you haven't heard this. Maggie, play digital media file number one. Just, just a minute of it. People are now assembling montages, and you know it's not even hard to do. Uh, all you got to do is just take just just take three of her uh, public appearances in the last six months or so. Certainly in the last in, in the last month, and you'll hear this. Without voter suppression, the accent is back. Stacey Abrams would be the governor of Georgia. Andrew Gillum is the governor of Florida. First, we saw her develop the magical accent when she was down south. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into some business now. Okay. And now it's back. You all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. We're going to beat him in November. <laughs> we're we going to beat him. We all know you don't talk like that. You've been vice president for four years. All right, <laughs> that's enough. Uh, Madeline, she, like, look. <laughs> Everyone knows who Trump was talking about in 2016. There's blood coming out of her eyes. There's blood coming out of her nose. There's blood coming out of you nowhere that he was talking about Megyn Kelly. Megyn Kelly is enough of a woman, though, and certainly enough of a good American to go like, I don't want that woman. I don't want these witches anywhere near the presidency anymore. I am going with Trump. I am a Trump woman. It's amazing this conversion to watch Megyn Kelly turn. But Megyn Kelly may be, and then look, She's a single cat lady, isn't she? I think yeah. she is a single cat lady. I think she has. I think she has children. But she, actually, so yeah, I think she does. So one of the things that's interesting is that this is sort of Hillary Clinton's fault. She she's the one who told women in the Democrat Party to speak like crazy people, depending on the geographic area you're in in the country. 
And people have studied this and the fact that if Hillary Clinton is speaking in New York, she is a very proper lady. And if she is in Georgia, it's all the y'all. But I find it interesting we mentioned Andrew Gillum and we mentioned him when it comes to Florida, seeing as what we now know about him. So e- even if that's something he you believe, he was a crackhead. He was, oh, he was under siege by the authorities for various issues at that hotel. There is video camera footage of the hallways of him running back in a very big state of undress. The idea that you would bring up Andrew Gillum, okay, if you want to bring up Stacey Abrams, whatever, but don't bring up Andrew Gillum, because even the most hardcore Democrats just sort of go, yeah, it was good, Ron DeSantis won that election. Can you imagine if Andrew Gillum had won that election? The Democrat Party in Florida would have been under cleanup duty 24-7, so it shows how little she even has studied politically to bring up Andrew Gillum in an election season. You know, uh, we made a, uh, a uh, record in 2008 and eight called Oval Office Dreaming. I just want to play one, one just, just while we're talking about fake Southern twangs. Kamala. Stopped him to a church to kiss Al Sharpton's aid. Here it comes. Well, I smacked down Hillary. And who fake Southern twang. And you're right. Hillary went to that church in Birmingham. And gave that speech. If we gonna beat this Obama, this, they're trying to run mm-hmm. this country like a plantation. Yep. And y'all know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Uh, this has been tried before, and it didn't work for Hillary in 2008. Did someone tell this dingbat that going to places and faking an accent is just stupid? You're just mocking the people you claim to want uh, to, you know, to support you. I mean, who, who's even going to tell her, though? Tim Waltz, who we now have learned, called Donald Trump to pretty much put out, like, a tweet saying, I like him, don't kill him. That's who her main advisor is. Or maybe, maybe it's her husband, who I think cheated with a nanny and has had to bury all sorts of personal secrets. This is not a team of winners she has surrounded herself with. She might win, but that's only because of either political apathy on the part of voters or some level of cheating. Matt- so who's going to tell her? And certainly not. Hillary Clinton. Magdalene Rose, our political affairs correspondent. Magdalene, you know with this Tim Walsh revelation with, uh, and I didn't hear that, but I can't wait to play it tomorrow with uh, with Trump on Godfell last night. You know what this is? This is the American press corps finding out that Michael Dukakis had locked yeah. Kitty Dukakis in a room, in a hotel yeah. room in 1988, and told the secret security guards, don't let that bitch out. Do not let her out. <laughs> and she conned them and going, I need to go get some stuff down the street to, to do my nails. And she went down and thinking that she could that she could drink nail polish that had alcohol in it, you know, she almost overdosed and died. And that the Dukakis campaign was over. Uh, this revelation about this that Waltz called Trump, <laughs> that's a killer. The, 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 that, I don't know that there are enough illegals, aliens on earth to tilt this election. <laughs> I think I think you might be right. I certainly hope so. <laughs> I can't believe. Hey, hey, Donald, there's, there's mac of people like outside the window. Man. Yes. Could you that's like- what it was like. That's what Trump said. He said he was like all like nervous and everything. <laughs> oh, this is just too classic. All right, Magdalene Rose, <laughs> political affairs correspondent. 